Welcome back to YouTube. We have Ahmed again from in-depth tech reviews and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 37. In this episode, I'm going to share with you all the new changes that took place in the first two weeks of November. But before starting, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel to get notified every time I post a new video and help me reach my first 100k subscribers. And now let's take a look at the new features. I will start with YouTube. And the first change is under the search. Now I started to see a thumbnail next to each search query. I'm not sure why YouTube picked up those ones specifically, but when I tap on any of them, nothing different happens. It will show me the normal search results as expected. So if you understand the logic behind this feature, please let me know in the comments. The second change is the ability to expand the video description in landscape mode. If you take a look at the top left, you will see the video title is now in bold and it has a small arrow next to it. Tapping on it will expand the video description like this and you can close it using the X. Previously to do the same thing you need to expand the description first and then go to the full screen view but now we have a quick shortcut. The third change is in the search results. In this case I'm searching for the Pixel 5. One of the videos is allowing me to expand the chapters and go through them before playing which is something we already have for a while but I started to see different types of information. Here is one of my videos that includes chapters as well, but instead of showing them, I can see the automatic captions with the timestamp instead. And when I scroll down even further, some of the videos are showing a small snippet from the video description, so it seems like Google started to surface different types of information under this expandable section. And now it's time for today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by cdkeyoffers.com. It's an online digital store that sells original Windows 10 and Office keys in a very discounted price. Not only this, but you can use my special promo code ID20 to get extra 25% discount instead of the regular 20%. This special offer is available from the 1st till the 30th of November. So hurry up before the month ends and save yourself some cash. As you see, you can get a Windows 10 OEM key for 15% point 18 dollars which is insanely cheap please check the links in the description below and now let's get back to the review next the home app and finally we got the remote that can control your chromecast with google tv and the other products powered by android tv os so let me show you how to set up the remote on my chromecast with google tv the first step is to make sure your phone and your google tv are connected to the same wi-fi network then tap on your device from within the home app at the bottom left, tap on the button called Open Remote. If it's the first time, it will ask you for the pairing code, which will automatically appear on the screen. Put it on your phone, hit pair, and you are good to go. The remote is pretty easy to use. It has a large navigation pad with a black dot in the center. It will allow you to navigate in all directions with haptic feedback when things change on the screen. Underneath it, there is a back, home and Google Assistant buttons and all of them work as expected. When you start searching for something, a keyboard icon will appear at the top right corner for easier typing and to exit the keyboard mode, just tap the X at the top left corner. One more thing worth mentioning here. At first, I didn't get any volume controls. So if you are impacted by the same issue, head over to your Chromecast settings, then remote and accessories, set up remote buttons, volume controls, and choose Chromecast from the list. Once done, you will see the mute and volume rockers under the previously mentioned buttons. Finally, there is a power button to quickly turn your TV on or off using the CEC technology if it's supported by your TV. The home app version that includes the remote control is not yet available on the Play Store, so if you want to download it, click the link in the description below. It will take you to my website so you can download the APK. Next, Google Maps. And the first change is the addition of the new animated splash screen like we saw in other apps. So let me show you this one more time. The second change is material use support. Now we got the same navigation bar we saw in all other apps, but it doesn't support dynamic colors yet. You will always see it in blue even if your device accent color is different. I also noticed the directions button is now using a rounded square design instead of the circular one. And this is the same thing we saw in other apps that support material you like Google Messages for example. You will see the same in Google Photos and Google Maps is following the same direction. And when you explore a specific type of places like restaurants for example, the filters at the top are now showing in rounded rectangles instead of a pill-shaped design like before. I also found a new color coding under the public transport routes. So for example, I will navigate to this place and expand one of the options I have here. 
If you take a look, you will see the buses are always getting a light purple color. But when it comes to metro stations, I can see different colors based on how crowded the stations are. And at the top, there is a new shortcut to activate the live view feature. I'm not sure if these two new features are new to Google Maps or not, but at least for me, this is the first time to see them. The last thing to show you is in the assistant driving mode. Now when I start navigation and then tap the apps icon, now I have a suggestion here saying add driving mode to home screen. Tapping on it will simply add a quick shortcut to your home screen. So after a few seconds, you will find it right here. This change is related to the Google app rather than Google Maps. So you can see my Google app version now on the screen. When you access the driving mode from this shortcut, you will get a different screen that we don't have inside Google Maps. It will first show you the most recent navigation, a card that shows your most recent YouTube music songs, another one to read your messages using Google Assistant, and one more to make a phone call using your voice as well. Next, YouTube music. And it got a new category at the top called Energize. In addition to the workout, relax, commute, and focus we used to have before. When you go inside, the description is saying boosting your energy. So you might think what's the difference between Energize and Workout. Under Workout, the music categories are very specific to the type of exercise you are doing. So you have things like cardio, yoga, uh, dancing, and in the gym. But when you go to Energize, you will see generic categories that are mainly focused on boosting your energy, like power through, power boost, guitars, beast mode, and motivation. Next, Google Chrome. And now when you try to download a file, it will show you a floating banner at the top with the details button. Tapping on it will take you to the downloads page. And when it finishes downloading, it will show you open. This is exactly the same thing we used to have at the bottom of the screen, but now it floats at the top. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to share with you in this episode. And if you got your hands on any new feature related to Google Apps, please reach me out on social media. I would like to thank each and everyone who shared with me a new feature in Google Apps. That was very useful and it saved me a lot of time. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.